Hi everyone, welcome to the end of April in the U.S. This is Ms. Schneider, Chief Strategist for MarketGage.com. Before we get into the chart that you're looking at here, I want to start just by giving a note that this is such a heavy week in terms of information, earnings, and so far we haven't seen anything perform too well after it reported, particularly Amazon, uh, AMD. We've had a lot of pressure in the market coming in ahead of a FOMC meeting tomorrow. Uh, we've had talk about Japan and the yen and uh, we'll cover that and also we have uh, GDP yes last week which was pretty horrific consumer confidence really bad and then we have the jobs report at the end of the week so a lot of people right now are raising cash let's go through the futures so what's so interesting right now is what I'm showing you here is natural gas and I'm following natural gas very carefully because this is the cash market. Here's your 50-day moving average. And you can see we've gotten through it, but we haven't really gotten through the bigger resistance that we're seeing up here at around 190. And what makes this chart so interesting is that if we go, and I'll show you in a moment, to the uh, May or the spot month, it looks very different. So even though cash is preferred uh, to trade by many people, in terms of really establishing a position, I'm still watching the spot prices on so many of the commodities commodities and it's really has prevented me from getting in prematurely number one or getting out prematurely as we're looking at the metals which we'll certainly go through so for natural gas if you're really interested in trading just the cash then you have to see that the 50-day moving average of course is going to be your major support here generally what we like to do is we like to look at the low of the day that it cleared the 50 now it did it here and then broke it and then did it again here. So of the two lower ones, this is a little bit lower. So this low yesterday at 173, that's going to be your support that you need to hold. And I think it's pretty simple from there. If it holds 173, then your next area to clear, of course, is going to be these levels at 190. And if we go quickly to look at the spot month, here you can see what I'm talking about, which is that we haven't cleared the 50 on this chart in this contract. So what does that say? That says, and this is June by the way, that says that really all we're doing right now is once again forming a very very long-term base that goes back since February. So clearly we have that major support here and if we just switch numbers what you really want to see is two closes above this 50-day moving average. We had one close here and then the next day it failed. So we need two actual closes above 208 and ideally you want to really see this get back over 214. Now let's do the same thing with the gold market here. You know of course we've been talking about the fact that it broke out from 2300 but really really it broke out from 2100 if you want to look back a little bit in time and then it had its next breakout over 2200 we're looking at cash so right now the fact that we've just gotten down breaking below the 2300 level down to 2280 it's starting to feel to me like nothing changed in terms of the fundamentals of gold this has just been a huge amount of influx into gold when we were making new highs and now the fact that it just stopped a lot of the weaker longs starting to get out of the market and possibly looking more like an opportunity uh, as far as um, support coming into to uh, play so right now what would I do I would like 2300 to hold of course um, or at least come back to 2300 and if we cannot hold up around these levels and I think we can go a little bit lower say 2280 we break down into 2280 a lot of people are looking now for a move back down to 2220 that was a huge area with maybe a little bit of a stop not quite as big at around 2250 if we hold this 2280 level and get back through 2300 yes there is resistance but that resistance can clear very quickly especially if there's any kind of news uh, inflationary news or the Fed leans a little bit more dovish than the market expected and then, of course, through 2300, we'd have to get through 2320. 
But if we go to the um, futures market here, you can see it fared a little bit better in that it's holding just about that 2300 level. What I wanted to point out to you, of course, was the momentum. So the momentum, momentum has gone all the way down after that mean reversion we talked about. It went all the way down now to the 50. So really, at this point, if we just go back a little bit to see when the momentum was at these levels, the price was much lower. So we don't want to see the momentum fail the 50-day moving average, especially with the price still so far above it. Otherwise, yes, then I would expect a much bigger correction. But do I think that that's the end of the gold move? Absolutely not. So right now, what we're looking at is how much of a correction we're going to get. And rather than the falling knife theory, what we'd want to see is some kind of a support area that either we see some price action consolidate at that point before it moves up or more like that V bottom type of situation where we could see back here where it sells off, makes a new low, next day goes higher and then continues to work its way up. Now with silver, same thing. We're having a big correction. Um, if you look at this high right here, it comes in uh, at about 26, 26. So figure a little bit lower than 26. It says here 2591. So I think anywhere between 26 and 2591 would probably be uh, enough of a correction. Of course, then we would have to be looking at the 50-day moving average around 2550. And let's just say I don't get negative in the silver market unless we break down under $24. So this thing has some room that it can actually go down even lower. But my sense is, is that we're getting pretty damn close to what would be the bottom of this correction. And of course, let's see, let's use 26 as sort of our measure of our bottom line. And then if we can get and hold 26, we would have to clear back over this low right here of 26.65, which it kind of stayed at uh, in terms of the spot price today for quite some time. And then at the end of the day, gave it up a little bit. So 26.65 is going to be pivotal to the upside. Then of course, we're going to continue to see resistance as we move up closer to 27.12. Uh, and then uh, up more towards 2750 and so on. Underneath this level, underneath this 2630, which is where it stopped today, if we get down to 26 and we break the 26, then I would really start to think we were looking oversold at around 2555. And that to me might be the extent of it. So again, just like gold, you know, you get a massive move in. Nothing really has changed from a fundamental standpoint. Yes, yields went up. Yes, the dollar went up a little bit. But that's been happening all the while on the rally. We just get these incredible periods of consolidation after they've sold off. This has been the classic when the metals look great. Uh, of course, the sell-off is about to happen. And when the metals look terrible, then the um, people pile in to start accumulating silver. And I haven't seen any reason why that bias has changed because we're still not into any kind of a hyperinflation, but we're certainly not into any kind of major recession at this point. So let's move on with a look at crude oil. This is West Texas. And um, again, another correction coming from the highs, but yet coming into support. 81 to $80 a barrel was really the breakout area here. And as we're coming in to test that support, we're starting to see, uh, obviously, a little bit of bouncing as we get closer to 81. So the question is, will 81 hold? Now, there is somewhat of a head and shoulders top. And I probably would think that if this breaks down under 81, not only may we might see a much bigger correction, but it could mean that, uh, A, it might behoove the Fed to be a little bit more dovish in the future, number one. But number two is what we just talked about with the metals. They, could too, could see a deeper correction. Price moves, then narrative changes. So for right now, we're looking at this 8190 level. This is where it closed in the cash. And if it holds the 8190 level, then we can start looking at a move maybe back up to around 83. And that does look like a dollar can happen very quickly. But you can see this has been having some pretty good moves in the course of a day. So let's go even quicker than that. So let's say this uh, 8190 level holds. Your first real area of resistance is going to be somewhere between this area of um, 8246 
probably close to like 82, 83. So that gives you a 40 cent range. Above 82, 83, then we're looking now more up at that 83 level, that, that top here that we just talked about at 83.50. And then of course, if we get back through 84, any chance of this being a head and shoulders top gets negated. On the flip side, of course, we break down under 81.90, then we do have to look at all these lows that have been put into place. Uh, really, basically, we're talking about a move maybe down to around 80.70. And then if that breaks, we've got a different ball game. But for now, I would expect that we'll see a little bit more chop and a little more range-bound trading. So here is the dollar-yen. And... This was this huge spike here. There was rumors about intervention. We believe that the um, Bank of Japan will probably wait to see what the Fed does here in the United States. But nonetheless, it looks pretty interesting because at this point, we get back through 157.90. You can see we had a spike quickly up above 160. 157 to 160 is where people think that the yen could get some level of intervention. How would we know? I would say if it breaks down under 157 and then goes down to 156 would impact the dollar. But for right now, obviously, uh, I would potentially look to be uh, interested in, in, in yen as having a more sustained move higher against the dollar underneath this 157 to 156 level. So we're going to end with a look at the NASDAQ cash market here. Um, as you can see, it's underneath the 50-day moving average. Um, you had a nice sort of almost bare flag formation with a flagpole. Here's the pennant and it broke down on it today and as you can see the big sell-off. Generally they say that often the move on the breakdown is as big as the move as the actual flagpole which would mean from 1830 or 1800 to 1700 is a $130 move and so far we went from 17800 to $17,388. So we kind of almost got the move. Maybe we have a little bit more to the downside, but clearly what is looking like right now is after this massive topping pattern, it is possible that we have not seen all of the correction yet. And under 17000 of course, the next place we really have to be looking at would be, I think, down below the 200-day moving average, even the 16000 So let's look at it a little bit nearer term. If you look at the low here and the low today, it's pretty close. So 17350 just to round it off, we're going to call that our pivotal number. We hold, that's more positive. We break, that's more negative. If we can hold that 17350 level, of course, then we're looking at 17550 so another $200 move potential higher. And then I'd say our biggest resistance really is up if you look at this top, this top, this top is really more at around that 17,800 level. Clearly, getting back through the 50 would mean getting a move back over 18,000. So on the flip side, of course, if we cannot hold this level, then we're looking slightly above that 17,000 at 17,150. Then, of course, that's 17,000. And then after that, you got to look back here and say this period of consolidation, the high was 16,880 and the low was really this low here at 16,000. Uh, 557. Okay, that's it for now. Hope you have a good day. Uh, obviously, patience will be the game until we see what the Fed has to say, and I'll see you all again next week.